Following the last video, let's dive into NVIDIA Part 2. Jensen Huang, Chris Malakowski, and Curtis Prem established NVIDIA, diving into graphics accelerator development. However, they found themselves pondering what direction to take. They became sure they must go after the gaming market. In 1993, their software Zoom gained massive popularity, and 3D graphic games rapidly started dominating the market. The growth of these 3D games inevitably impacted companies specializing in graphics processing. NVIDIA decided to focus their graphics card development project on enhancing game graphics performance, and they named this particular project MV1. Jensen planned for NVIDIA's first product, the MV1, to boost the rapidly growing multimedia application base by offering high-performance 2D and 3D graphics, a digital joystick interface, and advanced audio features for PCs. However, delivering high-quality 3D graphics performance was crucial, and implementing the technology was no easy task. Therefore, NVIDIA made the decision to try modifying the existing rendering method. At that particular time, most of the graphics chips commonly found in the market used polygonal texture mapping approaches for their rendering. But NVIDIA experimented with quadratic texture mapping technology to create smoother and more refined images. In the field of computer graphics, texture mapping refers to the technique of applying detailed textures or colors to a 3D model's surface. The MV1 opted to take the approach of wrapping 2D images around 3D objects, enabling them to look significantly more detailed and realistic without an increase in the number of polygons. Additionally, they improved the entire pipeline used for graphic processing to make texture mapping, rendering, and visualization more effective. Most importantly, they enabled real-time 3D graphics processing and enhanced various support functions like geometric transformation and lighting smoothing to create high-quality 3D graphics. Being a startup, they couldn't afford to simply enter the costly and daunting task of constructing a production line without careful consideration. NVIDIA successfully persuaded SGS Thompson Microelectronics to manufacture the MV1, utilizing the design from NVIDIA and the manufacturing capabilities of SGS. The product, codenamed MV1, was released under the name Diamond Edge 3D. In fact, the MV1 is recorded as the first example of accelerated computing, turning peripherals into accelerators. The MV1 was highly anticipated, getting investment from Sega Saturn, a leader in arcade. However, NVIDIA's first graphics card, the MV1, ultimately failed. Quadratic texture mapping had its advantages, but it faced compatibility issues with Microsoft's DirectX, which was becoming the graphics standard at the time. Later, NVIDIA succeeded in persuading Sega Saturn to develop the MV2 console graphics accelerator. But during development, SEGA Saturn decided to withdraw, and the MV2 never hit the market. And because of this, NVIDIA was on the brink of bankruptcy. In 1996, games like Quake and Tomb Raider further intensified the craze for 3D games. And soon, peripherals designed to accelerate 3D graphics began to launch everywhere. A company named 3DFX, which was founded a year after NVIDIA, showcased the Voodoo graphics card and achieved rapid growth. The rapid growth of 3DFX was so formidable that it became nearly comparable to the status of Microsoft in the graphics market. The Voodoo graphics card created by 3DFX used its own 3D graphics driver interface called Glide, making it easy for software developers to optimize and use in games. Because of this, many games supported Glide, allowing users to experience top-notch 3D gaming environments. Those that were quick to launch the latest technology dominated the graphics card market. NVIDIA also acknowledged the failure of the MV1 and made tireless efforts to develop new products. In 1997, NVIDIA introduced its second graphics card, the Rivo 128 Worldwide. Unlike the MV1, which used its project codename, the Rivo 128 was a product that NVIDIA carefully branded right from the start. By integrating the 3D and 2D graphics acceleration capability onto a single chip, this card managed to offer faster data throughput, enabled by the dedicated AGP interface. Due to these features, it held strong against competitors like 3DFX's Voodoo, ATI's Rage, and Matrox, which dominated the market at that time. To be sure, 3DFX's Voodoo was still the top choice for 3D performance and was considered the number one graphics card among gamers. However, with its integrated 2D 3D capabilities and improved direct 3D performance, the Rivo 128 certainly became a competitive graphics card worth noting. In just four months, Riva 128 successfully shipped over a million units, bringing NVIDIA out of financial struggles. Then, in just one year, by 1998, NVIDIA formed a partnership with TSMC and began expanding the Riva product line. The Riva 128ZX version was also released, but it was the successor, the Riva TNT, that changed NVIDIA's fate. The name TNT stands for Twin Texel, referring to the first multi-texture 3D processor. Its hallmark was processing two texels per clock. Simply put, it boasted performance similar to the top performer at the time, 
3DFX's Voodoo 2. This was the result of rapid technological advancements in a short time. Despite the fact that 3DFX's Voodoo was still dominating the gaming market, NVIDIA didn't give up its efforts and continued to innovate further, leading to the release of the Riva TNT2 in 1999. The Riva TNT2 model succeeded in having twice the graphic memory compared to its competitor, the Voodoo 3, at the time. Moreover, with broad support for Direct3D, along with enhancements in rendering technology specifically for 32-bit 3D graphics, it ultimately surpassed the capabilities of Voodoo 3, thus earning its place as a top-tier graphics card. Afterward, NVIDIA's graphics cards were often featured as integrated graphics cards in high-end custom PCs. NVIDIA expanded its options by diversifying the lineup with Riva TNT2 Ultra, Riva TNT2 Pro, Riva TNT2 M64, and Riva Vanta to secure a broader user base. They began winning over consumers while also gaining a competitive edge over 3DFX. Then in 2000, 3DFX went bankrupt. During this time, NVIDIA acquired some of 3DFX's technology, solidifying its unique position as a leading graphics company. NVIDIA, having already achieved notable success with the Riva series, recognized the significant limitations that were inherent in current graphics hardware systems. In graphic rendering, parallel processing to handle multiple commands at once was essential. As the need to handle increasingly complex graphic tasks grew, they realized the necessity for a chip that could effectively utilize parallel processing. The memory also needed to handle vast amounts of data in real time, so a way to supply this data to the chip without performance bottlenecks was crucial. NVIDIA continued to engage in research to fulfill these specific needs, ultimately succeeding in developing its own proprietary technology. This led to the launch of the first GPU, GeForce 256, in 1999. GPOS 256 was a milestone not just for NVIDIA but the industry as a whole, as it was marketed as the first graphics processing unit, or GPU. In short, a GPU is an electronic circuit specially designed to accelerate the processing of images and rendering tasks on screens. CPUs and GPUs both process data and perform calculations to deliver final results. But GPUs are optimized for graphic processing. Therefore, a GPU which performs parallel processing is comprised of significantly more cores than a CPU, which handles tasks sequentially one at a time. Thanks to this, tasks that take a long time like pixel or graphic work can be done quickly. The debut of NVIDIA's GeForce 256 was truly sensational. Unlike previous graphics cards that handled 2D and 3D processing separately, the GeForce 256 was designed with an emphasis on 3D graphics, making games and other 3D graphics appear more vibrant and smooth. Additionally, while older graphics cards experienced stuttering during video playback, the GeForce 256 included hardware-based video acceleration technology, providing clean and natural gradation even in real-time video output. This technological innovation brought by the GeForce 256 transformed the perception of graphics cards from mere display devices to critical hardware components interacting alongside the CPU, playing a huge role in the evolution of graphics card technology. After developing the first-ever GPU, the GeForce 256, NVIDIA started dominating the GPU market by releasing improved GeForce series GPUs almost every year. To look at a brief history of GeForce, the GeForce 256 created in 1999 was the world's first GPU. It made transformation and lighting operations possible on a graphics card, gaining attention for its groundbreaking features at the time. The GeForce 2, released in 2000, introduced TwinView Dual Display and enhanced the T&L engine from the GeForce 256. Also, the GeForce 2 GTS was the first module to surpass 1 gigatexel per second. The GeForce 3, released in 2001, added programmable vertex and pixel shaders, laying the groundwork for more realistic graphics and complex special effects in games. Released in 2002, GeForce 4 enhanced GeForce 3's capabilities further. Available in two key versions, TI for high performance and MX for budget systems. Introduced in 2003, the GeForce FX highlighted major real-time cinematic effects in games, but faced mixed reviews due to performance issues and a noisy cooling system. Released in 2004, the GeForce 6 introduced SLI technology, allowing users to connect two graphics cards for improved performance. The GeForce 6 was a major and notable success, helping solidify NVIDIA's position. Released in 2005, the GeForce 7 featured improved SLI technology and supported DirectX 9.0C, making it a popular upgrade to the GeForce 6. In 2006, the GeForce 8 introduced unified shaders and began supporting DirectX 10, showcasing CUDA technology for the first time. Released in 2008, the GeForce 9 was an improved model with more CUDA cores and better performance. Later, the GeForce 100 series was rebranded to target the niche OEM market. Sold mainly to the OEM market, the NVIDIA GeForce 100 series extended the GeForce 9 series, evolving with features derived from the previous generation. From 2016 onwards, the GeForce 10 series based on the Pascal architecture was released. 
The GeForce 20 series introduced the Turing architecture with RTX branding, emphasizing real-time ray tracing. Models like the RTX 2080 and the 2080 Ti, which have pushed the limits of game graphics, are part of this series. That was followed by the GPOS 30 series, which included models such as the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3090, which used the Ampere architecture, which had almost twice the efficiency and performance of Turing's. Graphics cards have become an indispensable technology today. We'll explore how NVIDIA became America's leading semiconductor company in the next video.